Senator Fifield, good morning. Good morning, Fran. Do you have an open mind? Is there any chance that this emissions trading scheme can be uh, salvaged and in good order for you to support it? Well, it'd be fair to say that uh, I was at the uh, reluctant end of the spectrum in terms of whether it's possible to uh, improve this legislation to an extent uh, that it could be supported. Uh, I'll be informed in my consideration by the government's response and uh, by the contributions of my colleagues in the party room. Just to clarify your reluctance, are you one of those who Nick Minchin said the other day, uh, included in those, when he said a clear majority in the Coalition Party room do not believe in the science behind man-made climate change? Does that include you? Do you accept human activity has caused global warming? Well, I accept that human activity is making a contribution uh, to warming, but the extent that it is, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I maintain an open mind. I'm, I'm not a scientist, uh, but, I, but I certainly uh, defend the right of those people who uh, do have a firm view um, as to the contribution of uh, man's activities or the, or the lack of. I certainly defend their right to put their views and their right to put their views without being branded sceptics or heretics. Okay. Well, the fact is you're going to face a uh, be faced with an amended climate change bill tomorrow. Sounds like, from what the Minister was just saying, that the Coalition will not get 100% of the amendments it sought. Tony Abbott has said the Coalition should reject the offer unless it's 100% there. Is that your bottom line? Well, I, I think Tony uh, Abbott's analogy was correct that uh, this is more like a negotiation for a house rather than an industrial negotiation, that uh, you really would expect... Uh, the government to come very, very close to what the coalition is asking for. But as I say, I'm... I'm so you have a reserve price that's less than 100%? <laughs> well, as I say, I'm I'm one of those who, who remain to be convinced that this legislation is salvageable. Uh, everyone in the coalition agrees that this is bad legislation. Uh, everyone in the coalition agrees that there is no reason to put this legislation before Copenhagen. Uh, there was little reason when we thought that we would find out at Copenhagen uh, what the view of the rest of the world would be. There's absolutely no reason now that that uh, draft 200-page treaty has been ripped up. We know that there'll be little more than an eight or nine-page press release to, to come out of that uh, Copenhagen meeting. So there is no rush. Uh, there's even less of a rush now that we know that uh, Canada is going to hold off on uh, legislating until uh, after Copenhagen. And there's even less rush now that we know that uh, it'll probably be the best part of a year uh, before the Waxman-Markey bill uh, gets through the US Senate. So um, uh, the important thing is, is to make sure that we get this right. This is one of the most significant structural changes to the Australian economy that's ever been proposed. And with the spectre of uh, power stations in Victoria uh, at best going into administration and at worst uh, shutting down, uh, I think it's important that we take the time and I hope that the Coalition Party Room takes the time uh, to consider this seriously. Well, your uh, fellow... Uh, Liberal MP and frontbencher Ian McFarlane has been taking a fair bit of time to negotiate amendments with uh, with Penny Wong. As we just heard the Minister say then, this is a deal for this week. The amendments that Ian McFarlane has won in those negotiations are only on the table for this week. Does that um, encourage you uh, and, and others in your party room to look uh, more sympathetically at getting this through this week? Well, the government's been negotiating for five weeks. They've had five weeks to uh, consider what the coalition is putting to them. And what the government is saying to the coalition party room is that you've, you've got to decide basically in the space of a couple of hours. Now, th this is incredibly significant legislation. Uh, it could have a dramatic effect on the Australian economy. And the government is saying to the coalition party room, um, consider it in a couple of hours. I think the government has condensed the time frame for consideration by the coalition far, far too much. Uh, but Ian McFarlane asked for, that, asked for it to be delivered tomorrow. Well, to be fair to Ian, uh, Ian's prime objective was to make sure that the coalition party room found out uh, the results of the negotiation from him uh, rather than from Penny Wong, as we saw uh, last weekend when Penny announced that uh, agriculture had been excluded. So Ian's been endeavouring to make sure that uh, we found out from him. Uh, the fault lies with the government, who've been carrying these negotiations on for five weeks. They, they should have factored in sufficient time for the coalition to consider.
Senator Fifield suggestions publicly that um, some on, let's call it the Turnbull camp, have been ringing um, others, critics of the ETS within the coalition and warning them that their sort of future advancement could be affected by how they vote. Have you received any of that kind of call, those calls or pressure? No, my, my phone has been strangely silent. So uh, it, it, I don't think that's happening, but uh, if it has, I've, I've certainly been neglected. In your opinion, is Malcolm Turnbull's authority in the party room on the line here? And if more than 20 coalition centres does end up crossing the floor on this bill, would Malcolm Turnbull's leadership be untenable? Well, Malcolm's position uh, is, is secure. Uh, he has the support of, of me. He has the support of the party room. And uh, I don't think colleagues are considering uh, this issue against the backdrop of leadership. Uh, it's appropriate when looking at legislation to purely consider uh, the policy merits of what's before you. OK, Senator Mitch Fifield, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Fran. Senator Mitch Fifield in our Parliament House studio and the, uh, as we heard, the Coalition will receive the amended bill tomorrow morning in the party room and then it's on for young and old.